I've just spent over eight hours in this car and 420 miles. We've managed to average 33.6 miles per gallon. Um, and I've, uh, I've managed to do it on one tank for fuel, which is quite handy. And I should also massively apologize for the state of it. Look at that eight hours in here and that is absolutely disgusting um so what was it like did you eat my cocoa pops bar and you see this could be the most yorkshire video i've ever done but usually a tank in this car gets me around 280 290 miles I've just left the petrol station and it said 505 miles. I've since driven half a mile up the hill, um, but this isn't supposed to be the Grand Tourer. Not with a V8 4 litre twin turbo. Look at the state of this. Now, when I bought this car, I said I would use it every day, and I think it's fair to say that's exactly what we've done so far. Um, the coffee's still there from this morning. I didn't eat my Belvita or my Cocoa Pops bar, um, and we're going to revisit this tomorrow because I am absolutely cream crackered. Good timing. Well, has the weather got any? better um i think that's yeah that's still a no and uh that's not looking any better either hmm. right. Right. you see guys the reason for making this video um first of all is to show you this noise because i'm well aware I've not made any content yet whatsoever with this car. There is a reason for that, but yesterday was kind of special. You see, I've now had this car two months, and like I said, I haven't really made any content with it yet. I better not close the garage door on it, because that wouldn't be very fun. But yesterday I spent eight hours in this car, like I said in the introduction, I did 405 miles in this Aston Martin Vantage in one day. I'm well aware that's no good for the value of it, but for me, it kind of made me fall in love with this car even more. Let me explain again. Because when I first got this car a couple of months ago, I was not undecided, but a V8, twin turbo, four litre, rear wheel drive, moving into the winter, a lot of people said it wasn't a great idea. And when we had a few days of snow, a lot of those people would have been right. But a lot of people said it's not a Grand Tour, you can't do long journeys in it. We tried to do long journeys in the Porsche, in the Cayman GTS, and we had to stop every kind of two hours because the seats just absolutely crippled you. Yeah? And yesterday I went down for a big meeting in London, and I almost took Laura's car, I almost took Laura's 2 Series Grand Coupe, because that would have battled through, it would have done kind of 60 miles to the gallon probably up and down the m1 no problem now i'm well aware that this car isn't designed to just sit on a motorway that's not what it's for and it's not what the driving dynamics are designed for it's also not designed for wet slippery roads like this but we'll still try and have a little bit of fun in it now this is almost kind of a first driver first review of this car i haven't done much content on it because it hasn't been as seamless as i would have hoped it's been back to aston martin twice it is now sorted. I must say, it was something really small. The brakes were squeaking a little bit more than I would have liked. Not a huge deal for a lot of people, but for me, I'm thinking I'm spending this kind of money. I don't want brakes to be squeaking randomly. Now, that has been pretty much resolved, or it has been resolved, and the guys at Aston Mine Leeds have been great. So now it's opened the doors. The last thing I wanted to do was film content in this and just not get the content I wanted. Whenever I stopped them to be squealing and screeching, and it was quite loud and annoying, to be fair. But yesterday, it was in a hurricane. Well, it was Storm Barra, but we'll call it a hurricane for um, yeah, for the title, pretty much. And I gave myself loads of time. I was like, right, I'm going to set off. I'll give myself five hours to get there. I knew it was going to take kind of three and a half, four. It did take four hours. 
I didn't stop once. I didn't even feel like I needed to stop once. I got a coffee, I set off at five in the morning, set off in the dark, there was no traffic on them one. It was beautiful. And when I set off, I had 280 miles in the tank. And I know we started this video with the petrol station, which was weird for me because that was last night and I was really tired, so I had to get some sleep. But the kind of big gist of this video, and I'm gonna go more in depth in it, is just how usable this thing is day to day because yes when you drive it around country roads and when you actually put your foot down it's the oh, see it's not meant for these roads at all but and we're not going to put it in track mode either because that would be a yeah that wouldn't be, that would be like a kamikaze mission but when you sit on a motorway in it and when you do a lot of long driving that's generally what you're going to do it will do 35 34 miles to gallon which i know isn't isn't insanely good but for a V8 twin turbo 4 litre that can do not 16 3 point something seconds, it really ain't bad, is it? And I set off with 280 odd miles in the tank, and by the time I got to London, I had 310 miles in the bank. So I'd basically grown 30 miles of fuel. I know that's not how it works, but the driving efficiency of it for me was quite ridiculous, and that's where I feel like. <sighs> Initially when I got the car, and this is probably the most Yorkshire video I've ever made, but when I first got the car, I was getting 15 to 17 miles per gallon. Obviously when you first get a car, you're gonna enjoy it, you're gonna test and see what it can do, you're gonna put it in sport mode, put it in track mode, and all the rest of things. But I almost thought after that first week, I'm not sure I can carry on doing this, because petrol prices have gone up as we all know. 17 miles to the gallon, although I don't do massive journeys that often, that's really not gonna cut it. And that's why I took this down to London yesterday, not just to test the fuel consumption of it, but to test what it can be like on a long journey. The idea for me in this is to maybe drive it into Europe, is to drive it up to Scotland, test out some of the fantastic roads that we have, and then enjoy it. And if you're gonna do that on 15 miles per gallon, then uh, as a Yorkshireman, I'm not gonna enjoy that. And I'm sure a lot of people who are watching wouldn't do either. And I'm sure you're all watching thinking, oh, woe is me, my car won't do, lots of miles to the gallon, should have got a two litre diesel. And I, yeah, I get that, I get that. But for anyone who's thinking about buying a car like this, the one thing I'd say is go and do some real life testing because I almost had, not a bit of a shock when the first week I had it, but I was kind of watching the fuel consumption go down and down and down. And it was like, hmm. But that's enough on the fuel consumption because what I really want to talk about is the comfort of this cabin. Now, I was lucky enough when the car went into Aston Martin a few weeks ago, they gave me an Aston Martin DBS Super Leggera, and that video, I think it was the last video I did actually with Liam, and that was so comfortable that the Aston Martin sales guys say, that's a brute in a suit. So, if that's a brute in a suit, what does that make the Vantage? Now, the Vantage is an entry-level Aston Martin, which is actually more probably attainable or achievable than what you might think depending how you buy it and how you finance it and things like that. The running of it is obviously different, but how can you sit in this thing for eight hours? I think it was eight hours in a 12 hour stretch. So I did get out and I did obviously had the meeting and it was a club fitting guys for one of the big manufacturers ready for next year. And that's all I can say at the moment if you're over here from the golf channel. But I just couldn't believe that a, I got up and down there on a full tank. I know I said I was gonna stop talking money and fuel, but I just can't stop myself. And B, that I didn't have to get out, I didn't have to stretch. I had a spinal operation a few years ago um, due to bad sciatica. So you can imagine that when me and Foxy, for example, went up to Scotland in the Porsche, in the Cayman, it was like, right, two hours, stop, get out. And we literally had to walk around for half an hour. Almost probably as bad as having an electric car and having to charge it all the time. But in this thing, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't get caught in any traffic, which I know can sometimes obviously hinder you and then you'd have to stop, but um, I think the longest longest stretch I did without stopping was something ridiculous like four hours and 10 minutes or something like that. Now, I'm not saying that it's as comfy as maybe a six series or as comfy as a Range Rover or something like that, or even as comfy as the DBX, the big four by four version of, of an Aston Martin car, but, I think this car does it all. And that's why I wanted to wait and kind of bring you guys this video because it's not so much, on a summer's day, you can kind of flip it in sport mode and it makes a lot of noise, it burps and farts and all the rest and you can throw it into corners and have some fun. Let's be careful with it, it's rear wheel drive. Obviously, 
you're going to stick to the speed limit as well and that's one thing which i did really well yesterday the mod cons in here are quite ridiculous so i've got cruise control i've got heated, heated seats i've got climate control dual climate control everything you would possibly want to have a comfortable journey so whilst you can throw it into corners in summer whilst you can put it into sport mode and act a bit of a yob sometimes legally you can still drive long journeys and be quite comfortable and you see the real funny thing is i was sat there almost playing a game with myself looking at how much range was in the car with fuel and how long i actually had left on the sat nav and there were times where on the way home i might have been 20 miles down i would have had to stop for fuel i would have had to go to a petrol station on the m25 or on the m1 which would have cost a fortune but instead it just, it just kept going up and obviously when you set yourself on cruise control at 68 70 odd miles an hour you're gonna do a decent miles per gallon, I'm well aware of that, but I was quite astounded. I would have been happy if it was doing 25, but for it to do 35 on a journey like that, just absolutely blew my mind. I was really, really happy with it, and it shows me you can use this car on more a day-to-day -day basis, definitely. The one thing I will say is I had to use my iPhone sat-nav, because the sat-nav in here, in fact, the whole infotainment system is rubbish. It's taken straight out of, an, straight out of a Mercedes, I think it is, and it's just outdated, it's it's crap now they are releasing a v12 vantage in the new year and i'm sure that the guys at aston martin i'm sure connor will let me get my hands on one go and test that now if i was a customer for that which i'm not because they're going to be like 150 180 grand for me it has to have a better infotainment system in it i'm sure it's going to look similar i'm sure it might have some kind of maybe wider arches slightly it'll probably look more like the the f1 vantage it'll be a bit more aggressive oh there's a bit of a ford here straight through it straight through it. the Porsche would have probably struggled in that this is just so much more usable than the Porsche way more usable but back to the V12 Vantage I'll definitely go and try it I'll go and compare it maybe and do some videos on it for this channel but is that going to be better inside because the only thing that let it down on this journey was that infotainment system so is this the perfect car I think it potentially could be guys I've really really enjoyed using it day to day you've seen i can get the golf clubs in the boot you've seen that i can enjoy myself in it you've seen that it doesn't hinder me day to day apart from when it snows which to be honest the bmw one series is going to hinder you when it snows as well so that's neither here nor there but pretty much for me name me a better car guys get in the comments below and let me know i think the storm has now passed oh and also check out some of these scenes i got from sunset on the m1 yesterday just cruising up i was like we're in, we're in the eye of the storm the sun was setting in aston martin it was absolutely beautiful and another great thing about this car is the presence that it has everybody seems to have a quick turn of the head or a double take and you don't get that yob feel unless you're driving in sport mode around the country lanes in the summer to the speed limit but nobody can if say if you were driving an italian sports car a german sports car something like that a lot of people will be like oh oh look at that absolute you don't get that in this car everyone seems to be happy for you everyone seems to wave at you people do wave i know that is absolutely ridiculous and i've not been to a petrol station once where someone hasn't come up to me be it a kid be it an old boy and say wow what a lovely car mate that is beautiful what is it and then you get talking turns out they're a car person or maybe they're not a car person but it is such a great feeling when you're sharing your hobby with someone because remember this is why we started this channel the off course channel to be a hobby so guys if you have enjoyed that thank you so much for watching make sure you do smash that subscribe button for more car related content and apart from that i will very much look forward to seeing you all in a couple of days time i'm hoping to make it more frequent now it is up and running